Hi guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodle. Welcome back to my channel. So we are here for another one of our mass making sessions. We are up to week number 174. So if for those people who don't know, we are doing reruns. So we are rerunning week number 74, doing week number 174. So what we are doing this week is we are doing the faux front envelope pockets. Um, these are not my idea. They are Gail Agostinelli's um, fantastic faux front envelope pockets. Um, but yes, that's what we are going to be doing. So what I have brought along or what you will need if you're planning on, you know, crafting along with me is you're going to need some envelopes. Now I have used these envelopes here or I have brought along these envelope, uh, envelopes here predominantly um, to use. They are from one of those card making kits. Now this is an A6 card making kit. So I'm thinking these must be a C6 envelope, which is one two three four five five and a half by one two three four four and a half five and a half by four and a half envelopes my favorite envelopes that i often use are the five by sevens um <clears throat> which i have bought one along for that um to try one but predominantly i'm going to be using these ones so a kind of yeah um yeah six by four ish kind of size so that's those. You are going to need some paper to obviously cover to make your faux front of your envelope. Now, again, and I know I say this every week, I'm using printables. That's because that's what I have, you know, predominantly got these days. Um, you do not have to use printables. You could use scrap bit paper or anything kind of thickish. I wouldn't personally use copy paper. I would find that, you know, way too thin. But, you know, again, it's completely up to you. You know, it depends what you feel comfortable using. So I've brought along a variety of um, printables, like I say. Now, mine are printed on, um, I think this is 210, 210 GSM printer paper. This is photo quality um, printer paper. And obviously, as you can probably see, it's significantly thicker than, you know, your normal copy paper. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a cardboard. It's not kind of quite that thick, but it is, you know, it is much thicker than ordinary paper. Then what I've brought along is I bought my little, you know, cup of black coffee for if I want to actually kind of, you know, coffee dye any of these. Um, I've got my distress ink in vintage photo with a blendy tool. I've got my scissors. I've got my glue. Now, again, I'm using Anita's Tacky Glue. That's the glue that I tend to always use. And then you may want to have some bits to decorate. So I've got, for instance, just here, this is from my um, Fun Photos kit. And it's just this image of the building. I don't know whether I will use this, but, you know, that's kind of, yeah, my starting point. Um, so I'm only going to decorate one. Again, up to you, really, how many that you, you decorate. You may want to have a bone folder. You may want to have a paper trimmer. I'm going to use my scissors only. And I'm going to use my scissor handles as, you know, um, to do the folds. Again, completely and utterly up to you. Now, the only other thing that you might want to do is if you've got one of those whale tail punch things, because we're going to make making some little tabs. Now, again, I'm going to make my tabs from scratch. And actually, what I will do is I will be using a little punch. Now, I'm going to use this one which is my oval punch, which is 2.5 by 1.9 centimetres. Now, you do not need to have an oval punch. I'm using this because I'm going to do my little tabs and make the corners from the tabs with this. If you do not have an oval punch and you really don't need one, you could use, you know, a little circle punch. You could use a little flower punch. You know, anything at all that's going to give you a sort of little, you know, snippy corner kind of edge. Alternatively, if you don't have anything to make a snippy corner, obviously you can cut your corners by hand. Personally, I don't make a very good job of doing that. But another alternative that you could use is if you've got a corner rounder, you could round the corners of your um, tabs. And so they would look more like a file folder tab rather than a, you know, whale tail type tab. Um, so that's all the things that we're going to be using. Um, and the paper trimmer, obviously, for those people who prefer to use a paper trimmer rather than cut, you know, freehand. So, yeah, that's all the bits that you are going to need. Now, these look a little bit fiddly, but they are actually, you know, very um, simple to do. So, yeah, let's get kind of started and straight away we will do one. So, 
Okay, so we're going to just try and make the first one. So I'm going to use this paper. Now this is from um, some new papers which are in my shop, which are, I'm going to be doing a kind of, um, yeah, series of background papers called my collection series. So I've only just started it so far, but yeah, I've got these damask ones. So this is from what I'm terming the rich damask collection. And there are rich damasks and then there's the light pale kind of damasks so this is the rich the rich damask one so they're really lovely and hopefully they're going to be just really versatile papers so then what I've done as you can see I've used my envelope as the template here and I've got it now kind of envelope size you know size um, and then what I'm going to do is I want to make a hinged part here like that okay i'm oh, sorry if you just heard that that was the postman i don't know why it was so loud um so i've bent that over now i actually need it going this way and that's going to sit on my envelope now i did not do it like this in the last video i faffed around and cut them in two sections but i'm thinking if i'm using the same paper there's no reason why i couldn't do it like this which I'm hoping is just going to prove actually slightly quicker and slightly easier. So I'm going to just quickly coffee dye my envelope. And again, you know, probably should have done this first. Okay, so coffee dye the envelope. Like that. Okay. Now these envelopes, they're plain white inside and, and outside. You know, they're not like the business envelopes where you've got that kind of stuff that they have inside they they tend to have like the blue pattern or you know a pattern inside anyway so like that okay oops did not do the flap so quickly do the flap right and then what I'm going to do is just going to put that to one side I'm going to coffee dye just the inside here of my paper now the reason why I'm doing this is because I use this for, uh, photographic um you know photo quality paper and to be honest I don't really necessarily find it um, coffee dyes in the nicest shade it seems to go very yellowy so I'm always a little bit kind of oh you know do I want to coffee dye or not so I'm just going to go with caution and just do the inside I think so I mean that's actually looking fine so yeah probably could have gone to the outside as well but we just try a bit and see how that goes oh, that's not bad actually but sometimes it could dry, you know, a different colour, I guess. So, yeah. Well, that's looking okay. Anyway, that's that's fine. So, just going to dry that off quickly. I mean, this is just kind of a really quick and easy way of coffee dyeing pieces when you haven't got a massive, you know, portion, a massive um, quantity of coffee dyeing to do. You can just do it very quickly and easily like this, which... I mean, he doesn't like just quick and easy, let's face it, so. Okay. Let's just give that a good dry. And obviously you don't have to coffee dye your pieces, you know, you could just think they might, you, you know, you might even want them plain you know nothing to not copy dyed or anything it's all personal choice and no essential you must do this or you must do that you know definitely not any of that stuff going on so you know go with how you would like yours to be not kind of you know because you feel that you now must copy dye your pieces so that's that now obviously this is my hinge now when Gail made hers she actually kind of made hinges now personally I mean I just find that a little bit faffy um and I find just folding the paper is fine anyway so you know that's why I've just decided to fold mine rather than you know faff around making hinges it's just because I'm not very good at doing that to be honest so this is going to go on top of my envelope now what I want to do is cut here to make a pocket so completely up to you but this is why I thought it might be easier this time to actually kind of cut the whole piece 
and then just cut my pocket afterwards. When I made them previously, you see, I had cut this piece and then I faffed around and cut this piece separate, separately. So I just think this is a kind of um, evolved way of doing it. And this was, you know, part of the reason why doing these mass makes is actually, you know, the reruns of the mass makes is quite nice because actually over time, you know, we do discover other ways of doing things and, you know, not always for the best, but sometimes they're better. And hey, sometimes it might be that actually it's not necessarily better or worse, but just one way suits you and the other way perhaps didn't. So for me, I think probably this is going to hopefully be a better way to do it. So putting that down there, oops, like that. I actually managed to glue it on. Okay, so like that. Okie dokie. Right, so that's my little hinge. Now what I want to do is I'm going to have this piece that I snipped off next to this. But what I want to do is make a little tab, which is what kind of holds this under. So I'm going to just take this same paper again. Do I want this same paper? Hmm, actually, I might, might mix it up with some other paper. So let's just cut this down. And this is just that from my junk journal basics paper. So we'll just take that, just so as I've got sort of a contrasting look here. We we'll cut that down and then I'm just going to fold that over. And this is going to be my little tab, which the paper is then going to kind of be slotted under. So, okay. So I'm just going to cut it down on this side, making it shorter. Now again, could coffee dye this. I'm just going to ink this piece just because I don't want to have to, you know, dry it again. So just actually take my oval punch and this is where I'm just going to slot this in and just make my little corners. So like that. Okay, and then the other one. Oops. And again, you know, I mean you don't have oops, don't have to get too fussy you know so long as they look similar that's good enough so again ink that around like that okay and then you can decide where you want your tab now you might want it in the middle you might want it at the top you know completely up to you and again you know you might want to do like a variety on different pockets so I'm just going to glue this one down here like that now, again, just using my wet glue and just going to pop, oops, pop that down onto there. Like that. Okay. Just squish that glue out. Okay. Oh, that looks lovely, even on the other side, doesn't it? With the um, coffee dyed, coffee dyed paper. So, like that. And then all you're going to actually do is you're going to put it onto your envelope as a little pocket. Now, I'm going to glue it on three sides. So along here, along this edge, and along that bit there. Okay, and then you just pop that down onto your envelope. Oops, like that. Press that down. Okay, just squish all that glue down. Now, obviously this is not going to be instantly dry, so I don't want to kind of muck around too much trying to open this because obviously, oops, it's just not going to be stuck down. But basically, you know, that's your, your closure. I will do it more kind of, you know, in a few minutes when it's actually dried. So that's it, that's your little pocket and you've got your envelope still on the back. Now you can obviously trim it down if like me, you've got any overhanging things, you can go in and you can kind of trim that down and tidy it up, but aren't they just gorgeous? Like I say, completely not my idea, you know, I can't claim them to be my idea or anything like that, but they're so lovely, aren't they? So yeah, really, really like them and again, don't they look very sophisticated and complicated and actually they're not at all. So, you know, a lot of kind of um, impact for, you know, something quite easy. So, yeah, let's put that one down. 
Okay, let's do the other one. I'm going to turn this off and I'm just going to quickly um, coffee dye all of my envelopes and the backs of my papers so that you don't have to watch that bit and then we can come back. Right, I'm back. I've now obviously dried my um, envelopes. You probably heard there that little bark. That's my little dolly. So, yep, she's in the room with me. She wasn't in the room with me. She was downstairs. But, yeah, she's come up since I was drying the stuff. So she's obviously decided it's more interesting in here than being downstairs. Okay, right. So this is another one of those rich damask um, papers. So I'm just going to use this. So they're a little bit damp still because I didn't dry them very well, um, but you know, they're hopefully good enough. So I'm just going to again, cut it along a little bit so we've got enough for the hinged part and then just go along here and again, just cut that kind of flush as I can with the envelope. Now, obviously it doesn't matter too much. You know, if you're not perfect, it doesn't matter. You can either trim it up, up afterwards or, you know, it doesn't matter if it's overhanging slightly, to be honest. I'm sure it will all be, you know, good enough. So I'm just going to then take my corner here, or not corner, but my edge, and then just fold it over where my hinged part is going to be. So like that. Okay, squish that down like that. Now... Again, I didn't make a very good job of cutting that, so I'm just going to kind of, you know, straighten that out a little bit, like that. Now, you could mitre these corners in. Um, if you feel that they're going to kind of slightly overhang the envelope or anything, you could kind of just mitre them in just fractionally. That's just going to help them, you know, stay snug and fitting into the envelope. Again, not an essential thing, um, but just something that you may, you know, may want to do. So, that's going to be like that. Fold that down and that will go over like that. Okay. So then what we're going to do is, yeah, put it on like that. We're going to cut down where we want our pocket to be. So I'm just going to, again, judge by eye roughly how big I want the pocket to be. So I'm just going to put it about here like that. looking good so that's it now what we want to do is again make our tab so taking our again this is that junk journal basics paper um you know quite a versatile paper i think will go quite nicely with this now i'm just wondering oh i don't know really how this will look but let's give it let's give this portion a try so just going to cut that down here yeah this might look actually rubbish to be honest but you don't know unless you try do you so let's take that got these little cherubs here so yeah um probably want to have that shown although to be honest i may end up finding i've cut his head off <laughs> when i go to do my corners who knows so, yes, I'm not making a great job of this, but never mind. So take that like that and down here. Now, this is where, like I say, you could use your corner rounder and have it more like a file folder kind of tab instead. So, you know, that would also work if you didn't want to use, you know, a chomper, i.e. taking a corner out. You could just, you know, round your corners. So, yeah, that's definitely an alternative way of doing it. Okay. There. Oh, I'm not sure whether I actually really like that um, tab on there. I thought it was going to look great, and actually now I'm like, no, I'm not sure. Let me just take some more down here, and I'm going to do it from that scripty section instead. So I just think, actually, in hindsight, the script I think would look better. So let's just cut this portion out here. Okay. Yeah, I think I prefer the, the script. So I'm just going to cut that edge off there. Okay, just fold this down like that. Okay, and then just take that section like that. Right, again, just going to then go in with my corner chomper. I mean, it's not a corner chomper, you know, my oval punch like that one. And this one. 
Okay, like that. Okie dokie. Right, just going to now quickly ink this one up. Like that. Okie dokie. And then just stick that on. Okay, I think that one looks slightly better. So, yeah. Oops. Maybe if it was up the right way, it would look better still. Okay, so then we're just going to glue this one down. Again, using the wet glue like that. So, okie dokie. Oops. Okay. Oops. Okay, so just going to put this up here. On there. Again, squish my glue down. Like that. Okay. Right. Oh, I'm making a bit of a hash of this, to be honest. Anyway, never mind. So going to again glue this one down here on the hinged piece i.e you know the folded part so just there okay just check i've got this on yeah because for a suddenly horrible thought i thought oh perhaps my envelope's upside down you know let's be honest that is the type of thing that i do do quite often so yeah there was a sort of possibility. Okay, let's just squish that down like that. Okay. Like that. And then we take our other part here and we just go into those three sides. Oops, again with the glue. Like that. Okay. So pop that down there. Like that. Okay. Oops. Squish that down. Okay. Looking good. Right. So squish that down. So hopefully, kind of, that's made, you know, a little bit of sense now and we can just kind of you know relax mass make a whole bunch of these so now they are a little bit time consuming so I don't know how many I'm actually going to get done if I'm absolutely truthful um but I'll try and do them kind of assembly style um you know in the make so we're doing kind of all bits you know at the same time if you see what I mean um so yeah we can just relax now have a nice time and do some mass making so let me put that to one side so yeah going to bring in my bits of paper so I think what I'll do is cut my bits of paper first to the size of the envelopes and then we'll kind of go from there I think so now doesn't help because my bits are still quite soggy I did not dry them very well so yeah completely my own fault um but yes I would recommend obviously if you're doing this I would recommend fully drying your pieces it would probably be better but never mind we should just you know we'll make the best of it so again just need to kind of remember to include that hinge you know i.e go over by like a centimeter or so like that okay right let's just cut that down so what I could do is actually probably even use this now as my template. The only thing is, I sometimes find that what happens is as I cut each piece, it gets actually bigger and bigger. So yeah, it might not work out as well as I'd hoped. But yeah, we can just put that to one side now. So this is also one of my new papers in one in my collections um, sets. And this is just the French set. So these two papers are both from that, the French set. So yeah they are also in my shop now so um yeah hope, hope you like them right let's take this one and just cut it down i think about here okay 
again must remember that hinge so yeah i hope everybody's week has started out well for those people who watch my channel you'll know i generally film these on a monday ready to put up for you guys on the tuesday so you know again and i know i just repeat myself all the time but my week's obviously only just started so yeah obviously you're a little bit further into your week um so what's new well i've already mentioned that little doggy haven't i so yeah the dog is still with us so touch wood it's all still going well she is such a gorgeous cutie i have to say so and i still am you know aware that i've said that i will definitely show her to you so yes i will definitely show her to you i just need to kind of fathom out a way of doing it um because i'm not sure you know how brilliant it would be to put her up on the desk she'd be like right up on the camera if you see what i mean um but anyway so yes she is still with us and she is just too 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 cute i have to say um just loving her absolutely loving her this is also in that french collection so i might do one in this as well because um yeah it's quite lovely isn't it uh, so yeah, she's in the room here with me. She was downstairs in the kitchen, obviously decided it was more fun being up here, um, you know, with me. So I've got her a bed now to, you know, keep up here. She's got a bed in the kitchen. She's got a bed in my son's room. I bought her a box thing yesterday for traveling in the car. So, oh my goodness, she's ended up costing a fortune so far and she's only been here five minutes so let's hope that we end up keeping her because otherwise i've wasted a lot of money really <laughs> but you know i want her to feel happy obviously so yeah and actually i mean to be fair you know i managed to get some of those things pretty cheaply so um yeah it, it's all good so right that's those now i might do one more oh that's also another one in the french collection which love that too um uh, hold on a second I just wanted to do a you know really different looking one so this is my um, flying tapestry paper and I just thought oh let's do one in this as well now I've backed it onto my vintage headers um, sheets so it is you know um, double sided I don't need to worry about coffee dyeing it but yeah I just kind of I searched around the desk for a minute and I thought oh actually I'd like to do one that's you know a completely different look really so yeah let's take this one down and do this one okie dokie there we go oh it was such a foul weekend honestly the weather was just absolutely horrible it's um yeah it's not been great lately to be honest so uh, Friday Friday was lovely I think um yeah Friday, I think that's been the only lovely day we've had for a while. It's been pretty vile. So, and definitely Saturday, it was just horrible. It rained for like the whole day. Yesterday, we were going to go out for a walk with the dog and it was really a beautiful day. And I thought, oh, brilliant. You know, it's going to be great. So we'd arranged, you know, we would go out at 2.30, you know, because then everyone had time to do the things they wanted to do. I had a few things that I needed to do. My son wanted to go to the gym and you know, all this stuff. And then, oh my goodness, at like literally 1.45, the heavens opened and it all just deteriorated. So, yep, no longer were we going for a walk, obviously. Because it was then not, not walk weather at all. Right, I'm just seeing whether I need to trim this down a bit. It's a little bit overhangy. Um, you know, I mean, again, it doesn't really matter too much, but... Just going to take it down. I mean, we're talking like a fraction, fraction of a millimetre, really. So, yeah. Okay. Right, so let's do that with all of these. Okay. Uh, do I want to have it over this side a bit more? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Like that. Put my hinge piece here. Yeah, so the weather was not nice at all. Um, it was actually then forecast to snow, would you believe, last night. Um, thankfully, it didn't. So, yeah, it's just, like, bizarre. And, I mean, to be honest, it's been very, very mild this winter. I mean, 
we've only really had a kind of cold spell for that. I think it was two or three weeks just um, in the run up to Christmas. And aside from that, it's actually been unseasonably, you know, warm. Well, I mean, not, not cold. I mean, I know I'm constantly saying how cold it is, but that's just because I'm pathetic, you know, and feel the cold. But yeah, I mean, actually by kind of like expected temperatures for this time of year, it's actually not really been cold at all. So um, yeah, it's weird, weird weather. And then um, what else have we been up to? Well, nothing much, to be honest. Um, yeah, we've been being very, very boring. Just, you know, yeah, just chilling out and not doing an awful lot. Obviously, you know, nobody's got any money. It's that whole after Christmas thing. Everything's got so expensive. So, you know, we're just, yeah, not really doing anything very much, to be honest. Um, which is, you know, very boring. But, hey, I, I think, you know, everyone's probably doing the same thing. Everyone's in the same boat and not doing anything. So, yeah. Okay down there um i mean i did a food shop on friday oh it was 80 pounds and i literally got like four bags of shopping you know not particularly anything very exciting or anything you know really just kind of essentials and basics but you know nothing extravagant or anything like that that's for sure and yeah 80 pounds so it's just oh everything's just got so 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 expensive it's just crazy and very worrying. You wonder where it's all going to end, don't you? Anyway, I must not get into this because, yeah, it's probably not not the nicest conversation. And, you know, we've all obviously come here for a nice time. So, yeah, let's move on to a bit more positive things. Oh, my goodness, the gym is heaving. So I've still been obviously doing my workout. You know, I, I just like to go to the gym every morning. And, um, oh, my goodness, it is so busy. You know, like with the January thing, you know, where obviously people kind of make their New Year's resolution, they're going to go to the gym. It's so busy. I think, I mean, I go there, I get there about six and um, I'm sure most mornings, I think there's about 65 people-ish when I arrive there. Um, I don't know, obviously, you know, whether that varies much whilst I'm there because I don't then kind of recheck. But yeah, it's around about 65 people. This morning, it felt very, very busy. So whether or not it was more than that, I, I don't know. But it felt very busy. Well, my son, obviously, you know, well, my sons, they go to the same gym. And um, yeah, my, my son, you know, we talked about how busy it was. And he said, well, mum, that's nothing. He said, you know, it's, it's really busy when I go. He goes in the evening. And he said, um, oh, they're parked like all over the place, you know. So, yeah, he messaged me a screenshot of like, because on the app, that's how you can see how many people are in there. It's not because I've like done a count while I'm there. You know, <laughs> it's not that I'm really weird and just count up how many people are there. But yeah, on the app, it tells you how many people are there. So I think it was Friday night. Or, no, it might have been Thursday night. Anyway, one night last week. He did a screenshot and sent it to me and... Well, now I'm thinking, actually, this, I might have dreamt this. One day it was 93, which, I mean, 93 compared to, like, 65, when it feels busy at 65. So, I mean, 93, that's a lot of people. Uh, but I feel like, actually, one day he messaged and said 127. But, honestly, now I'm thinking maybe he'd, maybe I'd dreamt that. Because that just sounds like way too many people, doesn't it? If I'm already saying it's busy at 65. Yeah, I'm not sure. But anyway, it's it's really busy. So, um, yeah, kind of looking forward to it dying off a little bit, you know. <laughs> Just because, you know, sometimes you can't really get on things and, you know, there's like nowhere to park and all of that kind of stuff. So, yeah, kind of looking forward to it dying off a little bit. But who knows, maybe it won't this year. Maybe it will stay busy, but... I mean, I think that gym's been there a couple of years now, but I feel like actually they could do with another one, to be honest. It's it's so busy. Because that's kind of like the first budget gym that we've ever had where I live. And, um, yeah, I mean, otherwise things are just kind of... Um, the gyms and things are very, very expensive. And, you know, it's so nice to have, like, an affordable gym. 
So I can see why, of course, you know, everyone's going there because, you know, that's the first time we've ever had like an affordable gym here. So it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. But of course, you know, what comes with that is obviously it's really busy. So yeah, they definitely, definitely need to, you know, open another one really. In fairness, they have opened another gym, not the same company, but you know, another sort of budget gym has opened, you know, locally. But it's not as cheap and um, I don't know, you kind of get used to where you go. And I've made some friends there and things like that. So, you know, I want to obviously stick where I'm going now. Um, but yeah, they could do with, you know. But it just goes to show how much they really needed to get some, you know, a more budget kind of gym there. The fact it is so busy, you know, it goes to show how much they were really kind of needing one. You know, because no one wants to be kind of ripped off, do they? So, okay. That I think we'll go okay on there. So, yeah. Let's take that one down. Okay. Right. Oh, I've been busy doing my accounts, you know, because it's obviously the, you know, the end of the year. Um, I've only ever done them, you know, for a few years and so I'm still kind of quite new at it and I'm sure I'm probably not doing it in the most efficient way and I'm definitely not doing it in the most efficient way, leaving it till the last minute like this. I mean, what an idiot, you know. But, um, yeah, I don't mind doing them, but obviously they do zap up a lot of time to do them. So, um, yeah, I should really try and be a little bit better, you know next year and things but I, I've said that every year and so far I've you know failed miserably every year and stayed just as you know just as rubbish and not done them you know ahead of time right just deciding which portions to use so I'm just going to use this kind of scripty because the script kind of goes with everything doesn't it so Okay. Okay. And then this portion here. Which is a shame, to be honest, to be using that portion and, uh, you know, not having that lovely flower, but. Okay. Oops, I need to put that in a little bit. Oh, I really want to see that film called Till. Um, there's, yeah, it's a film at the cinema called Till and it's based on a true story. Again, it's a sad film, um, you know, well, very impactful film. But, you know, sometimes those films, you know, you kind of have to watch them, don't you? Because these things are real life. You can't just shy away from them. So, uh, yeah, that's on at the cinema at the moment and I'd really like to see it. So I might try might try and go to see it the problem is it's not at very good film times now um and you know now that my son who you know generally i kind of go with my middle son now he's working he's not going to get back in time to watch any of the showings you know the showing times so yeah i'm not sure not sure whether i will you know get to see it really but i was talking to one of my friends at the gym this morning and she said she'd been to see it at the weekend and said it was a brilliant film very sad you know very um awful she said she, you know both her and her husband were kind of crying but yeah she did say it was a really good film so um i would like to see it there's also a film called a man called otto i think that's how you pronounce it um with tom hanks <laughs> I mean, I don't mind going to see that. You know, I wouldn't mind going to see it. Said about that one to my son. He said, oh, I'm not that fussed about seeing that. So, again, I don't know whether I will bother. Um, may or may not actually go and see that one. But, yeah. Okay. So, do all my inking. So, just kind of assembly lining this. Now, I'm so sorry. I've stopped my camera so many times today. So, I've now completely lost track of how long we have been filming for. So I'm just kind of judging this really on the last batch that I made of these and thinking I'm sure I've made five or something like that. So I'm kind of just basing it on that really, um, you know, 
Okay, oops, I did not do this. Oh, and sad news about Lisa Marie Presley. Obviously, can't really kind of not say about that. So, yeah, I mean, she was no age at all, was she? She was 54. And, yeah, I mean, that's not, not any age, really, is it? I mean, I don't really know much about her, if I'm truthful. Um, you know, obviously, she... You know, she must have had a strange life, mustn't she? Because she was kind of thrust into, you know, fame and all of that, really, whether she wanted to be or not. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously she'd, you know, she had made some music, hadn't she? But I don't feel like that was particularly successful over here in the UK. Whether or not it was successful, you know, um, in the States and things, I don't know. But, yeah, I don't feel like it was very successful over here, but hey who knows maybe it was and uh, you know so many of these things go over my head I don't know but um yeah very sad news anyway and absolutely horrendous for her mum and things you know because you know I mean your kids are still your kids aren't they you know no matter how old they get so even at 54 I mean that's just awful for children to go before their parents so um and obviously her, you know her son had um taken his own life you know I think it was a couple of years ago so you know that family's had a lot of kind of tragedy haven't they and um which just goes to show doesn't it that you know all that talent and you know fame and money and all the rest of it I mean it's no protection is it to you know when your time's up it's up so um yeah sad 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 Yeah, I'd heard that she'd been taken into hospital, I think, um, like the day before. And then obviously, you know, woke up in the morning and that was kind of on the news then the next day. So, yeah, sad. Very sad. And so many of these people are, um, you know, taken early, aren't they? You know, in that kind of industry. Or perhaps we just hear about it, I don't know. Who knows? But anyway, very sad. Okay. Yep, pop that one down there. Oh, so I have been busy filming um, a series, um, which will hopefully go up, you know, soonish. So, yeah, I've been kind of busy doing that this week. was trying to think if there is any actual news that I can tell you about the dog so well she is being rather cute now I have to say my son went on a sleepover on Saturday night so she'd slept in my daughter's bedroom um she didn't settle for a while and I said to my daughter because my daughter was like oh can she sleep with me can she can she can you know so I said well she can but you know you have to kind of like you know just stroke her and be patient she's not going to just get into your bed and straight away go to sleep because she's used to sleeping with your brother now said so, so you know you're going to have to kind of like persevere if you want her in there you know understand that it may take a little while to get her to drop off you know you'll have to be patient so she did and yeah so she went to sleep in there until about four o'clock in the morning and then she um got up and she said oh, mum mum can you have her in your room so yeah she came into my bed instead and then she was, um, a, you know, a good girl. But, of course, I didn't know what the time was. So when my daughter kind of got up and did that, I thought, oh, she wants to go out. The dog, not my daughter. <laughs> so um, I, I got up and put her out in the garden. I mean, and obviously she wasn't wanting to go out. She was just kind of sitting there, like, kind of going, no, you know, I'm not going out. Rightly so. Who would want to go out at four o'clock? But I was like, well, I'm downstairs now. You're going out. So <laughs> made her go out there anyway. But yeah. She's very, very, very cute. She's very, very loving, I have to say. So, And I have tried to leave her in a couple of times now because she was kind of coming everywhere with me. Which, you know, is okay. But I think I did mention, you know, not many places are very dog friendly, it turns out. And on top of that, um you know she also she doesn't like the car so you know that actually you know it's a bit of a problem you know when she's actually then kind of not settling in the car so um yeah it's been a bit 
bit of a sort of learning curve. I'm just deciding which one looks better on here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, been a bit of a sort of, you know, oh, she's not great in the car kind of experience. But anyway, she's, yeah, hopefully going to get better in the car. I'm going to have to leave her out today or leave her in, sorry, today. And it will be the longest I've left her in for. So far, I've left her in for literally like about 45 minutes. But today I've got to go, um, you know, for my accounts. So um, she's going to be left in for a little while, I have to say. Probably, yeah, maybe a couple of hours. So I'm just praying she's going to be a good girl. So, in fact, I'm going to have to go in a minute. So, um, yeah, I may have to cut this video short and then come back and finish it off later. Um, you know, after I've kind of done that because I've got an appointment obviously and um, yeah can't miss my appointment so there we go okay so just going to glue this one down yeah I think I'll have to stop the video go on my appointment come back and then do the rest of this video then because otherwise I'm going to uh, going to be late okay okay oh and the really good news is my mum has had her operation now so I know I talked about this a lot so if if you follow my channel and if you know you've heard me talking about it you may have heard me talking about the fact my mum she was really suffering a lot of anxiety and panic and things like that about it and she had to get some medication in the end um she's you know she did have to pay private to um get her hip replacement you know because you know you can't really get things particularly now on the NHS without waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and you know she was kind of in a lot of pain and so luckily you know she was able to pay and go private um so yeah she had it literally on Friday um I didn't see her really at all last week well I saw her very briefly but um she was avoiding everybody because obviously if she had caught COVID or anything like that, she couldn't have had the operation. And because it had been such a sort of ordeal for her, you know, she didn't want to risk obviously not being able to have it because she'd obviously had to really build her courage up to have it. So, um, yeah, I haven't really seen her. Having said that, I did go and see her then on um, Saturday evening after she'd had it. So like 24 hours later. And... Um, yeah, I mean, she didn't look too great, to be honest, you know, because obviously, yeah, she was still kind of groggy and things like that from the tablet or, you know, the medication. Um, but she's had it. So that's really great news. So thank you so, so much to everyone who'd sent their lovely well wishes and really, really appreciate it. Um, but touch with she's, yeah, she actually came home yesterday. Again, I haven't seen her since she's come home, but we'll hopefully go and see her, you know, this week. Obviously, I'm giving her a bit of space, you know. Um, because yeah, she's obviously not feeling great, but, um, yeah, so that's all good. Right. Now I'm going to just switch off at this point, go for my appointment and then come back. So I will see you shortly. Right. I'm back. I, my, um, appointment has been cancelled. So yes, I had got all ready to go and then was no longer going. So yeah, I, uh, have put the dog out and things and now we're back here. So um right okay where had we got to we had glued this one down so we've glued quite a few of them down haven't we so yeah just quickly glue this one down now actually i must have not not coffee dyed enough envelopes i think to even do them all let me just double check Hang on. yeah i think i'm an envelope short so we'll just have to do these ones um so shall we do this purple one or shall we do this one and it really doesn't matter to be honest but yeah let's do the purple one so that we've got you know a bit of a different look going on so we were putting the um you know tab on so yep let's put the tab on here okay like that okay so, and I have made myself a cup of tea now as well. So it was all good after all. And I messaged my son and things. So yes, it's it's all fine. <laughs> okay. The dog looked pleased that I wasn't going out anyway. So, because yeah, like I say, it was going to be the longest that I had left her. Although I haven't said that. It, 
you know, it's just been shifted now to Wednesday, so it's not like a complete reprieve, you know. I'll be doing it on Wednesday anyway. But yeah. Right, okay. Just trying to think if I've seen anything on TV or anything. I don't think so. Um, yeah, I don't feel like I've watched anything worth mentioning. I did, and I know this sounds very boring, and I do apologise for, you know, <laughs> probably most of you who would find this pretty boring, but I did watch um, quite a lot of the Snooker Masters um, yesterday and Saturday. I quite like watching Snooker. I know that just sounds a really dull thing to say, but yeah I quite like it and I don't know why even as a child I quite liked it it's about the only um sport if you can even term it as a sport that I don't mind watching um I th yeah I think I don't mind it because it's quite quiet and calm isn't it you know football I mean I just find football very very loud um you know I hate the sound of the crowd and that just sounds a weird thing to say but it really yeah I don't like that noise so yeah i quite like watching the sneaker anyway and yesterday it was the masters finals and i actually even yeah that's how much i was enjoying it i stayed awake until like half past 10 watching it in the end i had to give in because um you know that was like half an hour past my bedtime already i just thought wow i'm never going to manage to get up but yeah it was the um the finals last night so but it was very good i did really enjoy it so um yeah that was probably my highlight of the weekend was watching that really which oh how sad is that i know very boring very very boring <laughs> but like i say it wasn't like we did anything else exciting over the whole weekend so you know in my defense right okay right so i have got this one i still need to do but obviously you know, I'm going to come to that one, um, you know, in a bit because I haven't uh, coffee dyed the envelopes, you know, I'd only coffee dyed a few. Um, so the ones that we have completed, we have completed one, two, three, four, five. So actually five isn't isn't too bad. And then we've got this one ready to just pop onto the envelope once I've coffee dyed an envelope. So we could decorate this one up. This was the first one that we made. And I said that I had bought along that building image, didn't I, from the um, fun photos. So, yeah, should we just use that? So I'm just going to tear this down. Okay. I'm hoping it's going to be sort of, you know, good size to put onto this pocket. Okay. Oh, my goodness. I mean, how yummy does that look? I've not even put anything else on there yet but it just looks gorgeous doesn't it so yeah really really love it okay and then just wondering I've got some of these bits laying around on my desk because they're you know I've been using them for some other projects but actually that's really nice on there loving that color let's just ink this up a bit okay Okay. Oh, that's good, doesn't it? Yeah, loving that. Now, I've got some other bits that have been fussy cut out, so I'm just going to see if I've got anything. You know that colour-wise will just kind of tone nicely with this. Let me just see. I've got a variety of stuff in this little pouch. So we'll just see if I've got anything... I mean, I've got, hmm. that's just a purple flower from the horror Halloween kit. Oh. If I mix it with a red. Oh, I don't know about that. So let's just put that down there. Um. And I forgot to switch the light back on when I came back in. So I do apologize if it's at all dark. Um, I just totally, yeah, totally forgot. So, yeah, I hope it's okay, you know, vision-wise. Equally, I hope it was okay before with the light on. So, okay. Oh, I can never really see which way is the right way and the wrong way of this lace, to be honest. Okay. 
Oh, let me put my glasses on. Maybe I'll have a bit more luck looking with glasses. Not really. <laughs> it's looking remarkably the same either side. Oh, right. I think that's the right side. Let's hope so. So, yeah, I think like that. Now, I'm just going to hot glue this down on top of here, and that's going to just then clamp that lace down. Oops. Okay. Yep, looking good. Oh, I just absolutely just always love building images. And funnily enough, I did use a building image um, in the first round of this, um, making these as well. It was a different image. I think it was a book book image. But yeah, I just always really do love any any building images. Now that's quite nice. So that's just one of my labels from, I think it's the label set two, but actually that is quite nice. Um, so yeah, we could maybe go for a label. Got a number tab, that might be a little bit too, too much. Although it's quite nice over there actually. Yeah, let's just go for that. Now, just going to take this down a bit because it's got a little corner missing. Again, I'm just being completely ridiculous now, overkill or what, but just going with that hot glue just because it's then glued down instantly and I don't have to keep pressing it really. So just a lazy, lazy technique there. <laughs> okay, let me just quickly finish my tea. Okay. Mm. Kind of would quite like a flower, but having said that, I quite like just the um kind of like the subtlety of it without a flower I think so let's just put the label down so although the label's in the middle kind of of the image it's obviously not in the middle of the you know the piece so I quite like how that looks to be honest yeah quite nice um just check if there's any other any other flowers that I would like here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's quite a nice one, to be honest. Or do we think it's better with none? I like the flowers, to be honest. They're, they're quite pretty on there, aren't they? Um, just see if I've got anything else. Uh, shame I haven't got any more of those particular flowers. Oh no, I'm so sorry. Now my phone's ringing. Hang on a second. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. It's just one of those days, I think. So yeah, I do apologise. Um, right, I'm going to just put these flowers over there because I think they do look quite pretty, don't they? So yeah, let's just pop those on over here. Like that. Okay. Looking good. Right, then on the back of here, what you could do is just kind of tie it in with a couple more pieces. So we could have, you know, just a little bit of the paper maybe. Just sort of either there or I mean actually, what would have been nice is to line the envelope with the paper. Now the thing is, I do not have, um, well, yeah, I don't have enough of it here for a start, but also this is on that thicker paper. And so if I was lining it, I would probably line it just with copy paper, but that would be a very nice kind of finishing touch would be to line the, you know, the inside with what you've got on the outside. I think that would look very, very pretty. Um, you know, and quite kind of, yeah, quite stylish. Um, Obviously, I do not have that, so I'm just going to, yeah, improvise with what I have got. So, let's just take this down a bit more. Okay. So, I'm kind of thinking, yeah, let's just ink this up. Like that. I guess we could have it that side like that. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but actually I think I prefer it on here. 
yeah, I think I do. So let's just take that, pop that down. Okay, wishing actually that I had another building. Actually, I might have some on those French collection papers. So let's just put this one down for a minute and I'll just see, just see if I've got something. Got my little fan heater going now. So yeah, because since coming back, you know, after getting ready to go out and then discovering I wasn't going out, changed my ring obviously. Um, <laughs> yeah, who knows why, but anyway, changed my ring. But also, um, yeah, it was a bit chilly because um, the house has got kind of colder. So I have the heating come on for a bit, you know, obviously first thing. And then once the kids have kind of left the house, I obviously then have it go off. And then it obviously gets quite chilly. So uh, yeah, it's a bit chilly now. Right, just going to see how this would look. So we could have something like this on the back or actually these ladies. So let me just try them for a minute. Hold on. They may be too big for that back. Let me just see. Okay. Let's just take them down here. So yeah, we could have them. Let me just ink them up a bit. Okey-dokey. Oh, they look pretty, don't they? Yep. So just going to put them down there. Now what's sometimes helpful, if you're kind of gluing something down you know, where it's got an opening, is I just like to put something underneath to catch any kind of overspill of glue so it doesn't glue onto the portion beneath, if you see what I mean. So I can then just glue around here. Like that. Like that. And then just, yeah, press that down. And then when I move that card, obviously, it's not then glued onto the inside of the envelope so yeah just kind of saving that really now do we want any bling because for some reason i seem to be being a bit bling free lately which oh i have no idea what that's about but we don't want to go down that route do we of being bling free i mean that's no fun whatsoever so just having a quick look i have got these flowers i'm not sure they're quite right um let me find where's my normal my normal black bling there we go, just a little bit here. So yeah, we could just have a little bit here. Do we want it there? Do we want it like there? Quite liked it up there actually, I think. So yep, again, just hot glue that down. Just there next to that. Okay, how pretty does that look? Just finishing that off like that. So, yep, absolutely love how that looks. Really, really lovely. So, this is the, um, you know, the finished bunch that we've made. We did, obviously, the four, plus we've done the decorated one, and I've got the other one left to finish. Um, but, yeah, they're really pretty, aren't they? And um, just really nice. Like I say, completely not my idea. They are Gail Agostinelli's idea. I will try and remember to link her original video um, below of her original idea of these. Um, but, yeah, really hope that you like them. And thank you so much for watching, everybody. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks so much then. Bye.